Hi everyone, it's Leela from Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I am going to show you how I created this mermaid tumbler. So there's a little bit of everything in this tumbler. I have a peekaboo, I have a Milky Way, and then I have glitter on this tumbler as well. Like always, I have all of my materials posted down in my description below, and I will also have how I created my decals for my mermaid scales at the end of this tutorial. So be sure to, if you are interested in that, be sure to fast forward all the way to the end of the tutorial. All of the glitter that I will be using in this video will be posted in my description below and they are all from Glitter Heart Co. I will be adding not only their website in my description along with their glitter colors used, but I also have a coupon code for you to use for your first purchase of Glitter Heart Co. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started on this tumbler. I first sanded my tumbler with a 180 grit sanding block and then I wiped it down with 91% alcohol. After that, I sprayed it down with a flat white spray paint. And now I'm going to apply epoxy on this tumbler. I'm going to be applying my glitter with the epoxy method. So I mix a very, very small amount of epoxy. I mix about four milliliters of epoxy and I probably won't even use that. So I mix two milliliters of, of part A and two milliliters of part B, totaling four mLs of epoxy. If you do wanna know how to mix epoxy properly, I will have a video in my description below on how to mix epoxy properly. I've applied my epoxy to my tumbler. I'm now going to apply my glitter. I will be using five colors from Glitter Heart Co. And I will have all my colors in my description below. My first color is going to be City of Atlantis. It's a nice uh, chunky glitter. It's a teal color. And I'm just going to apply it in a spiral direction. And I'm not really focusing on where the color or the uh, glitter goes. It's going to be a Milky Way tumbler. So it's gonna look like a lot of colors mixing together anyway. So don't focus on the, um, of where the, the colors go on the tumbler. My next color is Blue Moon and I'm just going to place that right next to uh, the Atlantis. And I have a very heavy hand as you can see. So uh, it kind of went uh, over it, but that's fine because this color is a transparent color. So this is gonna look really nice. Uh, with that tumbler or with the mermaid style tumbler. Them being mixed together will not affect the look of the tumbler. And now I'm going to uh, put under the C on this tumbler. It's a nice purple and green color shift color. I really, really like this glitter. It's not chunky, but I like the fact that it's color shift and it just reminds me of a uh, mermaid so much. So I had to put this on this tumbler. Now for another chunky color, it's going to be a nice blue. It's called Sugar Lump, and I really, really like this blue. So I'm just going to place that right along the under the C. My last color is Aquamarine. It is a fine glitter, but I do like that sea foam or that uh, greenish color that it brings uh, to this tumbler. I think it's going to pop. And I'm just going to, again, just line it up with the last color that I put on my tumbler. And now I'm just going to fill in that space with any other color that I like and uh, just repeating the process, again, with my heavy hand with the blue moon. I'm just going to let the tumbler spin around. I'm not going to chase the tumbler. I'm just gonna let it spin until I can catch it again to add that glitter right to that tumbler and then pat it off a little bit to get that excess glitter off. I'm going to be adding sugar lump and I'm just adding it to the spots where I didn't uh, add glitter just to fill in that white spots. Now I'm adding under the C. And my last color, aquamarine, and that last white spot that I didn't add the glitter to. As for the bottom of my tumbler, I turn off the turner and then I mix all of the colors on the paper. And then I lift up the paper with my hand and then I just smush it on the bottom of the tumbler. And I like to create that uh, mixed effect on the bottom. I think it looks really, really cute mixing all those colors together. And this is a really, really pretty color scheme. So I think these colors mix together very, very well. Makes a really, really pretty tumbler. 
I then pat on the tumbler to get any excess glitter off of the bottom or around the tumbler. I put it back on my turner and then I turn my cup turner back on. For my next step before I allow the tumbler to spin on the turner and dry, I'm going to go around the tumbler and pat down any of the chunky glitter uh, with my finger or a gloved finger just to make sure the chunky glitter doesn't uh, peek through whenever I epoxy. This is going to eliminate any sanding that you might have to do uh, later on down the road and I really, really hate sanding. I know a lot of people, they now put wax paper on the tumbler, press it down and it presses down the uh, chunky glitter. So if you wanna go ahead and do that method, you can go ahead and do that. I'm just going to use a gloved finger and go around the tumbler. Now that I pressed all the glitter down on my tumbler, I'm going to let it spin on the cup turner for two hours. After two hours, I'm going to turn off my cup turner and then I'm going to allow it to air dry or air cure for another two to three hours. So about four to five hours, I'll be back for the next step. Hey guys, I'm back with my tumbler. It has been spinning and air curing for at least five hours. So the epoxy underneath the glitter is now dry. On to my next step. I know a lot of y'all have seen my original Milky Way tumbler with the other blue tumbler. Um, and my next step was to put a layer of epoxy, let that cure, and then add the Milky Way. I know a lot of people, they kind of do it a faster way. So I wanted to try it out um, that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the layer of epoxy and then we're going to add the inks uh, onto the cup. So I have mixed my epoxy off screen. I've mixed a total of 50 milliliters of epoxy. That's 25 mLs part A and 25 mLs part B. This is a 20 ounce tumbler. I probably made a little bit more than what I should have, but we'll see what happens. So I have my 30 milliliters of epoxy inside of my uh, big paper cup. And then I have three small cups filled with about 10 milliliters of epoxy. So the reason why I did that is because I'm going to add clear epoxy over this, uh, about 20 milliliters. And then with the three single cups, the small cups, I'm going to be adding um, the acrylic paint. So I have my white, because I always like to add my white to my Milky Ways. And then I have two purples here. So let's add that layer of epoxy to that tumbler now. And I'm just going to add it uh, just like as I would any other tumbler. And the reason why we're adding that layer of epoxy is so whenever I add those paints and the uh, epoxy to my tumbler, it's going to have a layer of epoxy over the glitter so the paints can have uh, somewhere or something to kind of move around on. If I were to add my inks in my epoxy now, the inks won't move around and swirl around the tumbler the way that I might want it to. So I'm just going to finish this up and it looks like I have my 20 milliliters and that was about just enough. So I have that layer and let me just finish the bottom and then I'm going to add that paint to the epoxy. Now to add the paint to the epoxy, I am adding a very little small amount of paint because if you add too much paint, then it's going to get really, really sticky and you don't really want that. Uh, you don't want the paint to be sticky. So you just want a nice like drip. Um, a lot of people say uh, like yogurt. So if it's, uh, if it's drippy like yogurt, uh, then that's how, that's the consistency that you need. I always put more in the white because the white is a lot uh, lighter. So uh, it's very transparent if you don't add a lot of the ink in there, or I'm sorry, the paints in there. For my next step, I'm going to stir these paints and I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but these paints are from Walmart. They're about 50 cents to a dollar each. They are the apple barrel paints. And I don't look at the finish. I just grab whichever paint that uh, looks pretty. So whichever color I need. So some, sometimes I add gloss, sometimes I add matte, and sometimes I have satin. So I don't have any specific finish of the paints. This is the consistency that I'm looking for. You see that it just drips. It has a nice flow to it. That's that dark purple and then this pretty lavender has that nice flow. You see how it's just flowing right down. That purple one is Wisteria. I have Royal Violet and then I'm using white. 
So you always have to play with the white because sometimes the white doesn't mix like you uh, like you want it to. It gets kind of funky, I think, because it's so light. I'm going to hit it with the heat gun just for about 10 or 15 seconds. I'm doing this just to make the epoxy kind of start spinning. I don't want to hit it too much with the heat gun whenever I add my paints because I don't want the paints to really overwhelm the glitter. I want the paints to kind of complement the glitters. Um, so I don't want it to overwhelm it and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to spin this my way and then I'm just going to add it to the paint in a diagonal manner. So I see that the paint is added and it looks like it's a little transparent. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of my dark purple, which is the wisteria. I'm sorry, that's the royal violet. So remember what I said, you can always add more. So now I have a, a more solid color and I'm just going to add that along that tumbler. And I'm keeping with that flow. And the good thing about Mucky Ways are whenever they're finished, uh, you could see that they look really, really pretty for one and two. You cannot really, you can't really mess this uh, tumbler up. So I know a lot of people, they like to put their, um, their paints on left or right or up and down. You don't have to go with the flow, go with the uh, spin or the turn of the glitter you can put your paints on whichever way you like and also you can put as many colors as you want of these tumblers i'm just choosing three just because that's all i have on hand right now and i wanted to kind of make that mermaid look and i always like to add white to my uh, milky way i think it like uh mixes the colors really well so add 10 15 colors or you can even just add white i've seen a lot of gorgeous uh milky ways that are just white and they are really really pretty so you can see now my tumbler just looks like it's glittered with just a bunch of lines on my tumbler. That's how it's going to look. If your tumbler looks anything like mine, you're doing good. Uh, as the epoxy goes to turn, you're going to see the paints kind of shift. And you can see I have so many, so much paint left over. Um, but you're going to see uh, the paints kind of shift. And you can see there's uh, one coming around here with my finger right here. You can see the paints are already starting to, to do its thing and make that nice Milky Way effect. Now, again, this is the first time I've made this tumbler with skipping that one step. So I'm not sure uh, how well they're going to swirl as much as I want them to, uh, because I don't know if maybe the glitter is going to stop them from swirling, but we're going to see. So far, it looks good, um, but the cup is not finished yet. So now I'm going to go in, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to go in and just kind of hit it a little bit where I think there's spots that just need to be hit just on top here with this darker color. And you can add as much paint as you want, or you can add as little paint as you want. And the good thing about adding too much paint is you can always scrape it off and I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about here soon. I really, really like this lavender. Everybody knows purple is my favorite color, so I know I'm going to go overboard with these paints. And now for my last color, it's going to be white. And I don't know if you're noticing, but I am doing straight, I'm sorry, I'm doing diagonal lines, but the lines are going from top to bottom of the tumbler. And I'm hitting the bottom with the paints, so the bottom's going to make a cool little swirl effect. And how I like it is I like an uh, even... A distribution of the paints and the glitter so I want paints but I also want the glitter to pop as well so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spin my cup turner the other direction I always do that and then I let the tumbler spin I'm going to allow my cup to kind of spin for about five to ten minutes and I'm going to try to see if it's going to have any change so you could already see the mix of the colors uh, I'll zoom in in here in a bit but you can see the lines kind of separating, making a wavy effect. That's what you want. You want it to be that nice wave effect. So I'm gonna let this spin for about five to 10 minutes and then uh, I'll see how it looks in about five to 10 minutes. I'm not going to hit this with a heat gun just yet. If I need to hit it with a heat gun, I will eventually, but right now I want it to spin because the longer you have it spin before it completely dries, the more it's going to have that swirl. So don't go crazy with your heat gun because if you hit it with a heat gun right now, especially with me hitting it with the heat gun in the beginning, it's going to mud all of your colors. You want that nice milky way. You want the separation of the colors 
and still having a, a nice flow to it, if that makes sense. If you hit it with a heat gun, everything's gonna mud up and the colors are just going to blend. It might look beautiful, but that's just not the look that I'm going for with this tumbler. So it's been about um, a minute or so since it's been turning and I noticed something on the tumbler. I noticed some bare spots. There's um, glitter peeking through where there's epoxy not sticking. This is the reason why I like to put a coat of epoxy on my tumbler over the glitter and then add that Milky Way. I know a lot of people like to save time and do this, but this is the main reason why I like to do this because in the end, you don't have to sand as much and you don't have to re uh, keep uh, epoxying. If you do it this way, it's fine. What I would probably do after this is I'm going to just smush my fingers my gloved finger into the spots where I see that it's, the glitter is peeking through or might be bare. And if you don't want to do this process, you could just let it spin, let it continue to spin and just add another layer of epoxy, decal and add another layer. Or you can just decal and then add another layer of epoxy. It's not that big of a deal. I just like uh, to add that first layer first. But again, if you are in a hurry and you need to do it this way, so be it this way looks like it's actually turning out very well and the colors are still starting to mix the way that I want them to. Like I said, while the tumbler is spinning, I am just kind of dabbing with my finger on any bare spots I might see. So I take my gloved finger and I kind of cover it up. If I just dab it just a little bit, it kind of covers up those bare spots. If you don't want to do this, if you think you're going to mess it up, just let it spin. Add another layer of epoxy whenever it's dried, add your decal and another layer. My tumbler has been spinning for about three to five minutes. Uh, you could see how much it has changed. Again, I'm going to zoom in here in a second. I just want to let y'all know, instead of hitting it with a heat gun, just like shown on my last video, I like to spray mine with 91% alcohol. This kind of moves the paints the way that I want them to without overdoing it. So whenever I hit it with a heat gun, it moves the paints, but they kind of smoosh together. So this allows the paints to kind of loosen up with the epoxy and it does a nice uh, swirl around the tumbler. If you've let your tumbler spin for about 10 minutes and you still don't see your uh, epoxy kind of separating or making that Milky Way effect like here, uh, you can hit your tumbler with the heat gun. I would advise you hitting it with the heat gun on low. I do have my Wagner heat gun. Uh, I would hit it on low and I would do it very far away. So probably about 12 inches away because you don't want a lot of heat. Again, you don't want it to smush together. So a little bit of heat goes a long ways. Even if you don't see the immediate response with the heat, if you don't see that uh, swirling effect immediately, back off, give it about two to three minutes and you can see the paint starting to shift. Another thing I want to mention is a lot of times I get questions about my bottoms. If you can see my bottoms kind of caking up there at the at the uh, bottom, uh, the paints kind of cake up. So whenever this dries, this is going to be a lump. So it's trying to catch up to itself, but it's just not catching up. So what I do is I take my popsicle stick and you can always do uh, something else I'll show you as well. But I just kind of scrape that down. That piece I scraped right down on the bottom and then I kind of flatten it out. And the good thing is that the tumbler, um, it's gonna rotate as, as it is. It's rotating, so it's going to even out. It doesn't have that big clump. Another thing you can do if there's a lot of, um, too much Milky Way, I should say, and not enough separation, you can take your popsicle stick and take your, uh, the tip of the stick and just kind of flow it through the paints. If you like the effect that way, then you can uh, keep it that way whichever way you like. I really like that effect that it's uh, doing on the top and uh, around the sides of the tumbler. So you could see adding that alcohol ink, at least I can see adding the alcohol ink really makes that difference. Another thing you can do, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking about these random things, is if you see any bare spots, you can take your, um, your paint mixed with epoxy and kind of uh, stick that on your tumbler. Again, if you think it's gonna mess up that tumbler, then I wouldn't do it. But if you're confident enough or you can get your gloved finger and then just dab it on the tumbler where you see any bare spots that uh, there may not be any epoxy. And here's my tumbler so far. So it's been spinning for about 10 or 15 minutes with the paints on there. So it's starting to really do that nice swirl effect. My next step is I'm going to allow my tumbler to spin on the cup turner for about six to eight hours. 
after six to eight hours, I'm then going to turn off my cup turner and then I'm going to let it air dry or air cure up to 24 hours. So I'm gonna allow it to air dry or air cure for another 12 to 14 hours. After 24 hours, uh, I'll um, take my cup off and I'll show y'all and I'll see how I like it. Welcome back everybody. I have my tumbler here. The epoxy is completely cured on my tumbler. I have some spots that are kind of bare or dry with no glitter. Um, this is the reason why I like to do that coat of epoxy before I do the Milky Way. Um, but I guess this will have to do for now. So I'm going to do some light sanding and I want to kind of make this a peekaboo tumbler. So this is going to be a peekaboo Milky Way tumbler. So I'm going to do some light sanding and then I'll move on to the peekaboo effect. I will be sanding my tumbler with 220 grit sanding block and I'm just going to do a light sanding on my tumbler. This is just to get any areas that um, the glitter may have poked through or might have not sticked all stuck all the way. So it's just going to scrape that off. Whenever you sand your tumbler, you're going to notice your tumbler is going to be foggy or gray. I don't know if it shows up on the camera. That's okay. Whenever you put that next coat of epoxy over this uh, tumbler, it's going to clear right back up and it's going to have that nice shine. All right, guys, so I have my tumbler all sanded down and I sprayed it down with 91% alcohol just to um, make sure I did get it sanded properly. I'm now going to do the peekaboo effect. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to be adding um, a decal. I'm going to put the decals all over the tumbler and then I'm going to spray paint it and then I will remove the decals, epoxy, and then add more decals. So these are the decals that I have. Um, so what they are is it's kind of the backing to these scales and I started weeding these scales so I can show y'all what it looks like. So this is what I'm going to be making the peekaboo and at the end I'm going to add these weeded scales and what I'm doing is I'm actually peeling these scales up with my fingers and not a weeding tool because I'm going to add some extra scales on top um, just to give it some more glitter. So you could see this nice glitter holographic scales I'm adding. And I'm also going to be adding some of these scales and add this to the peekaboo effect. So I'm going to take the backing and I've already cut it on my Cricut Design Space and I'm going to add this anywhere around the tumbler. I don't have to use transfer tape for this. It's not necessary. So I'm going to add this. And like I said, it's going to be that peekaboo and I'm just going to add it at a diagonal angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, make sure you are using a uh, temporary vinyl or 631 vinyl. So make sure you are not using permanent vinyl because if you use permanent, then it will not come up. I'm now going to add this part on here and I'm just going to place it anywhere like so. And then again, I have that, uh, the over scales that I'm going to be placing once I finish the peekaboo effect. And that's going to be placed here. And then I'll add one more uh, somewhere around the tumbler maybe hanging off. So I have my third one and you can add these as big or small as you like. Make this tumbler your own. And then I'll add one up here kind of, I always like whenever it looks like it's getting cut off. So I added, I added it up at the top and then I'll take an X-Acto knife and then cut it down. So just like so, and I can actually leave it here for the peekaboo effect uh, because I'm just going to be removing this. So if, uh, if you wanna just keep this like this, just to spray paint it. And once it's finished spray painting, um, you could just remove it and let it hang off like this. For my template, I removed some scales. So I'm going to be adding some scales around the tumbler and I'm trying to add it to spots where there uh, is glitter peeking through. Like I mentioned to y'all before, I would have rather done this and added that layer of epoxy before because this tumbler is not smooth. And uh, I did all the sanding that I could so don't forget to add that extra layer of epoxy on that step that I skipped over just to see how it would be. I have my decals on my tumbler like so. Now my next step, I'm going to spray paint. So like I mentioned before, it's going to be a little lumpy. So whenever you spray paint this, I'm going to see a lot of bumps on this tumbler. 
So what you could have done was to put another layer of epoxy, let that cure, and then do this process. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do this just so I can get through this video to show y'all how to do this tumbler. The two colors I'll be using to spray paint this tumbler are going to be aqua and French lilac. They are both from Rust-Oleum. I'm either going to spray the bottom with purple and the top with blue, or I'll do maybe half and half or just kind of randomly spray it around the tumbler so I can get that Milky Way effect. So I'm going to take this outside and then I will return. Okay, so I have my tumbler here. I wanted to show y'all. So I'm just going to spray this tumbler with blue and then purple. And I'm just spraying randomly around the tumbler. You can see I told y'all how it's going to be kind of uh, wonky or not smooth. That's because I didn't add that last uh, coat of epoxy, which is okay. But I just want to show y'all this uh, effect. Actually, with mermaid scales, it might look kind of cool. So you're just spraying enough to cover up that glitter because you want this all to be spray painted. And I'm just gently going back and forth. You can see I'm doing small spurts around the tumbler until I no longer see the glitter on the tumbler. You can see I just randomly spray painted that on the tumbler like so. I do not like how this isn't smooth, but I don't have any patience to uh, epoxy this and then spray paint it. So I just wanted to show y'all and make sure you get that bottom there. And I added a little scale at the bottom. I'm going to put this back inside on my drying rack. I'm going to let it dry for about 15 to 20 minutes and then we'll remove the decals. My tumbler is now dry with its spray paint and I'm now going to take off the vinyl. You want to be very careful while doing this. You're, you want to pull away from the spray paint like so and just kind of pull. So I'm not pulling down towards the spray paint, I'm pulling away. So I'm going to be pulling up for this piece of uh, vinyl. You can see it does a peekaboo like so. And then I'm just going to remove the rest. I think mine's still a little sticky, but I'm going to try to remove them anyway. So very, very carefully, I'm just gonna remove every piece and then I'll return when I'm finished with this. What you could do is go ahead and epoxy this, add your decals over here and then uh, re-epoxy it. But what I'm going to do is since I'm adding my decals to my already epoxied area, I'm just going to add my decals like freehand. I'm not going to use transfer tape and then I'm going to do a final coat of epoxy. If you are going to be adding decals to your spray painted side, then uh, like a name across here or a nice mermaid quote on your spray paint, don't do it on this step. Make sure you epoxy it, let it dry or cure for at least 24 hours and then add your decals and then add another coat of epoxy. But like I said, I just wanna hurry up this video to show y'all. So I'm just going to place these, uh, this decal stencil like so and I just want it on here and it's going to be very tedious without the uh, transfer tape but I'm just going to kind of place it on here like so and then you can see that decal like that and then I'm going to add the rest I'm going to keep these what you could do is cut out each one and then put a, um, a stencil on each like small one but I'm just going to keep these like this just so it can kind of complement each other. Um, and if I don't like it, then I'll, I'll just cut, out, cut it out at the end. Since I've cut my scales uh, on top of my uh, tumbler, I'm going to cut these individually and place these on my randomly placed scales around the tumbler until I run out of them. All right, guys, so I have added all my decals to my tumbler. So you can see all of my decals are on my tumbler. I wanna zoom in for y'all here. And now I'm going to epoxy. Now. As I said before, these little bumps are driving me crazy. It's because I did not do that layer of epoxy over that Milky Way. So again, 
Check out my description below if you have not seen my Milky Way, original Milky Way tutorial. I always add that layer of epoxy before I add the Milky Way. I get a lot of messages asking me why I do it and this is why I do it because I have all of these bumps. So that's how you avoid those bumps. So what I'm going to do is I have epoxy. I have about 20 milliliters of epoxy. So that's 10 milliliters of part A and 10 milliliters of part B, totaling 20 milliliters of epoxy. I know I sound funny, it's because I have my respirator mask uh, for my epoxy. So now what I'm going to do is epoxy my tumbler. Oh, I also added in my epoxy a uh, frosty. So I added the color frosty from Glitter Heart Company. I need to get more, but it's just to add an extra little shine on the tumbler. So I'm going to do that and then I will go ahead and return with the next step. So my epoxy has been added to my tumbler. You could see that nice frosty glitter on top of there. It gives it a really, really nice shimmer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this tumbler spin. And whenever it's cured, I think I'm going to sand it down one more time. And then I'm going to epoxy it. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I have all those little bumps from those uh, glitter underneath the epoxy. So I'm going to allow this tumbler to spin on the cup turner for six to eight hours. After it's about six hours, I'm going to turn off my cup turner and then I'm going to allow it to air dry or air cure up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, I'm going to then go ahead and sand it down and then I, I'm going to add another layer of epoxy. If you decided to do your Milky Way the way that I like to do, the way that I recommend my original Milky Way with an extra layer of epoxy and avoiding the roughness and yours is more smooth, there is no need to add another layer of epoxy after this step unless you are going to be adding a decal. So if you want to add a name or a nice quote to this, then I would wait, let this spin for um, spin and air dry, air cure up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, go ahead and add that decal. So for my decals, this is how I make my scales. I use a Cricut, so I opened Cricut Design Space and I Googled mermaid scales and I found a clip art that I like so uh, you can also google fish scales and then you add it to your computer and then you open it up you upload it on Cricut Design Space. Whenever I uploaded it on Cricut Design, Design Space I trimmed it the way I wanted the shape to be. I trimmed it like a pyramid so if you want yours to be more round or more square you can shape yours whichever way you like and then I added it to the design space. So once I had it to the design space, um, I made it the size that I think I'm going to put it on the tumbler, and then I duplicated it. Once I made two of these images, what I did, I kept the images the same size because you want these to be identical. I'm not really good with computers, so this is the way that I do this. So if you have a more advanced way, if you want to use a different software to create this, go ahead and skip this part of the video, but this is how I created this, and I just wanted to show the beginners who might not know how to make the background. So I went to my shapes, and I just chose the circle, and I duplicated the circle, and I added it over top the scales, one at a time. And I basically welded them all together. So you can start with a big circle, and then click weld at the bottom right, and now you have that welded shape. So I did this over and over again until I had that shape completely filled in. And this took me about 10 to 15 minutes to do, so this is very tedious, but whenever you're finished, the finished result should look like so, the shape to the right, which is in yellow. 
and I made sure that they were the same size. If you want to resize while you're editing, just make sure that they end up the same size. So this is 2.551. I just went to the scales and I put in the size 2.551, just so they can be the same size. So whenever they're on the tumbler, they'll be placed. So whenever I place the scales over the peekaboo, it'll look like so. Whenever I weeded my scales, of the gray scales, I kept the inner scales and those are the accents that I added on the tumbler. So be sure to peel these off with your fingers. Don't add your weeding tool in there because you're going to poke a hole. So if you're going to be using them, just peel them off with your fingers. Um, I'll post the link of where I uh, purchased my vinyl from and it was very, very easy to just peel them right off. I am using a 20 ounce tumbler. So I just went ahead and I measured my tumbler and it's usually about three inches on a 20 ounce tumbler, so I kept it around three inches. So I made three different shapes. So I added these together. So I made sure, so this is 2.882. So I went to this shape and I made the width 2.882. And make sure your locking is on at the very bottom here. Make sure that's on because if you make the width 2.882, it's going to auto correct to 2.517 like the other decal. And I shaped it over here and I selected both. I clicked control on my keyboard. I selected both images and then I resized them together. So I made one about three inches, uh, 3.3 inches, and then the other one was like 2.7 inches.